Hi, this is Dr. Kevin Kirby. I'd like to talk to you again about some of the important aspects of how we can produce the best orthoses for our patients who suffer from mechanically related foot and lower extremity pathology. I like to discuss the making of foot orthosis for our patients, which includes the diagnosis of the patient's pathology, the fabrication of the orthoses and prescription, and the final evaluation of the patient's uh, shoes and their gait examination as being links in a chain of events. There are 10 links that I like to describe in this chain, with each link of that chain needing to be structurally sound in order to produce a strong chain of events that produces an optimum, optimum functioning custom foot orthosis for our patients. So I'm going to go through these 10 events uh, briefly. Obviously, there's much more to this than what I'm discussing here in this short video, but I'd like to emphasize the importance of that we should not just emphasize one uh, part of the orthotic chain of events that needs to occur versus another, because any weak link along the chain can produce a malfunctioning orthosis, one that is not tolerated by the patient, and one does not take care of their uh, symptoms properly. The first chain of the link that's important to start with would be making the proper diagnosis of the patient's injury, what is the structural component which is injured, and what were the forces, uh, whether they're tension, compression, or shearing forces that are causing this patient's pain. This will be important to determining how we design the orthosis for the patient. The uh, second part of the chain, a link of the chain would be proper clinical examination of the patient to determine the structural characteristics and range of motions of that patient's uh, joints, uh, foot and lower extremity joints, so that we can better determine how their left and right foot compare to each other and how this will uh, correlate with what we see later on in the next chain, which is the gait examination. So the third link in the chain of events that needs to occur properly is the gait examination, which is very important since we're not only seeing how the structure and ranges of motions of the joints of the patients is interacting to produce the walking or running gait pattern, but we're also evaluating this patient's central nervous system, how they respond to their structural, uh, any structural or functional abnormalities they have, and how whether their a central nervous system is allowing them to function normally during their walking or running gait. Fourth, at this point of the exam, one of the important links and very important links is discuss with the patient the type of shoes they intend to wear the orthosis in. We need to not only discuss with them the optimum shoe type that would be helpful for them, most helpful for them to relieve their foot and lower extremity pathologies, but also determine whether we can make an orthosis that would take enough of the stress off the injured structure in the shoe that they need to wear to allow them to heal. And this should be discussed with the patient on the initial orthotic evaluation casting a visit and also in prior visits to prepare them that they may need to change shoes in order to uh, have their pathology improve. The next step in the chain, next length of chain is to make the three-dimensional image of the patient's foot. This may be by plaster casting, maybe by foam box method, or by optical scanning. Uh, any of these three-dimensional rendering of the plantar foot methods that we use uh, should be done so that the clinician, uh, podiatrist, or foot health uh, specialist can uh, be ensured that a proper plantar three-dimensional representation of foot was taken so that this can be used to produce a properly fitting custom foot orthosis for the patient. Number six is, again, very important, and this is going to be determining what specific type of uh, foot orthosis, shell, uh, top cover, forefoot extension, uh, heel modifications such as rear foot post angles, rear foot post thickness, rear foot post length, medial or lateral heel skies, medial arch height, uh, intrinsic or extrinsic forefoot uh, posting and plantar fascial grooves, et cetera, and forefoot uh, accommodations. 
should be used within the orthosis in order to decrease the uh, pathologic forces on the injured structures of the foot to improve gait function or optimize gait function and to prevent other pathologies from occurring. Number seven, seventh length of the chain is to compare the fit of the resultant custom foot orthosis that has been ordered to the patient's foot. Make sure that the orthosis fit to make sure there's not some sort of issue with the lab or with the way that the patient was casted uh, or scanned so that we can make sure that the orthotic does fit the plantar foot the way we think it should. The eighth length of the chain is to then make sure the orthosis fit into the patient's shoes. This uh, seems obvious to me and to many of you who are experts in custom foot orthosis therapy, but you would be surprised how many orthoses I see from other practitioners where the orthosis simply is not fitting in the shoe properly and, and not allowing it to uh, function properly. So this is a very important part of the chain of events that needs to occur to ensure optimum uh, foot orthosis therapy for our patients. Number nine, once the orthosis is fit into the shoe, the ninth link is to then watch them walk again or run in the shoes to make sure they're functioning properly, make sure and there's not an abnormal gait pattern being caused by the orthosis, that hopefully their gait has improved, and also asking them at that time specifically how do the orthosis feel on their foot. I, I many times will spend a few minutes speaking to them about how the orthosis feel so that they are understand that they're going to feel different pressures on the foot, but they not, should not feel a sharp pain or the feeling of a ball or a rod inside their shoe, which to me means they probably won't be able to tolerate uh, the foot orthosis inside the shoe uh, at, uh, until their next visit. And finally, the 10th uh, link in the chain of events that needs to occur to produce a properly optimized custom foot orthosis for our patients is to follow this patient, follow these patients up in two to three weeks time. And then if they're having problems again later, possibly in another two to three weeks, or uh, even subsequent to that, in order to ensure that not only are the foot orthosis comfortable, is their pain from their pathology improving? Are they feeling as if the orthosis have been helpful for them? And are they able to wear them in their shoes in their various weight bearing activities? Any of these 10 links, if they are weak, uh, will decrease the overall strength of this chain of events that needs to occur to achieve optimum custom foot orthosis therapy. And I think this is an important concept for all of us podiatrists and foot health clinicians who do a lot of custom foot orthoses to understand that we need to think like this in order to ensure that each step along the way, we're doing the best we can for our patients' uh, foot health and to relieve their pathology that is uh, causing them pain during their daily weight-bearing activities. Thank you very much for paying attention, and I hope that this is helpful for all of you.